have my intro.
Aloha kakayaka. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes, we're in the season of the reason of the season. And uh, we're here to, the reason we're here for this season is to give praises to the Lord. And we'd like to welcome all of you this morning. Hope you folks are having a, a fabulous holiday season with a kickoff from Thanksgiving and continuing on to the rest of this year. A very challenging year, but also a very blessed year. And we just give God the praise. We give God the glory, and we're going to just rock the rock, rock the house today. Okay, is that okay with you guys? Amen? Amen. All right. this morning thank you for coming into our presence enjoy the worship have your way with our hearts no scared them go get them as they say right
God, we want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning. And we're just going to mention your name because there's so much glory, so much. You know, when we mention the name of Jesus, all we want to do is just smile. I don't know about you, but all I do is smile. Jesus, just to mention all your name. Flowers grow, the desert proves again. Like flowers and mentors grow. gang that wasn't Jesus calling <laughs> Jesus just to mention of your name flowers grow flowers grow the day Because of his great love, 
Hallelujah. Let's give God the glory. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning there, Colleen. Good Hi. morning, Auntie. Good morning. Sorry, uh, I was in the middle of worship. That's why I wasn't able to answer the call. But um, praise God, you guys made it. Hallelujah. <laughs> right on. Thank you, Jesus. All right, church, welcome. If you just tuned in, once again, we call Light and Life Ohana Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. And um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hang on. Jesus. Okay. E hova he malele ke akua i ka hiko ia, i ka nani ka ihi ihi, a me ka hana hano ke ho o mai kai, ke hozana ke mililani, a ho ho o ako ne mako ia oi, no laila e aloha mai oi i ka poe e kawa, i a koko o mai nei, e ho o mai kai i a mako, a me ka mako mau hana, a elana pu mai ko o hane he malele. Me, mau, me mako i kulike ai, ka mako lawe lawe ana, me kau i make make ai. No laila e ho o nani ia ai e oi, i loko o ka ino o ka makua ke keiki, a me ka o hane he malele. O Holy Jehovah, the God that is filled with splendor, sacredness and glory, we thank you, we praise and we glorify thee. Therefore, have mercy upon us who are gathered together. 
Bless us and our work. Let your Holy Spirit abide with us so that we may be able to do thy work according to your will, Lord. Therefore, we praise thee in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. There's a few announcements uh, before we continue on. Let me see if see this. Am I shaking? Can you yeah. can you see the shaking? What is that? Um, how do I see the video? What video? The first one. Yeah, not yet. We gotta do the announcements. Okay, Hallelujah. Uh, once again, we're on a break from our Bible studies and uh, Olelo classes. Uh, I have to shut down my office during a break here all the way to January 19 because I need to to submit administrative work there. So we are taking a break from our Bible studies. We've been actually Bible studies and uh, Olelo classes. We've been every pretty much every Tuesday for Bible studies. And uh, we're in um, chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians or it could be 15. I'm not sure. I got to double check. We did a couple of days off, so. And our little class was going strong, Ooh, pretty much very too strong. So we needed a break, took a break, and I uh, called a break. So we'll be on break to uh, January 19th. Enjoy the holidays. Speaking of holidays, we're having our third annual Christmas dinner. Virtual style, because of COVID, we were not able to uh, join all of us together. And if you look at that picture, there's a lot of us that was there on last year. So we cannot do that this year. So we're going to do something different. We're going to do a virtual uh, Christmas dinner. And we'd like to welcome all of you to join us, if you can, on um, December 17th. From 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock to 8, around 8-ish. But we're eating dinner at 6. So 5 o'clock, come early. We can, you know, fellowship on Zoom. That's our Zoom number right there. We're going to fellowship. Um... And then we're going to have dinner and then we're going to, you know, we're going to have some games and we're going to have prizes. Okay, so when you win a prize, we just got to take down your address and we'll mail it or we'll deliver it in person to you. So even if you're on another island or the big, big island of Usa, yes, you can still play our, our uh, we're going to have some spiritual games and we're going to have some winners and some prizes. All right. And um, uh, also Christmas caroling. Yes, we're going to do some Christmas caroling. We're going to mute everybody, and then you're going to hear us sing so that there's not too much uh, cutting off because you get too much people going, then it cuts off the Internet or whatever on Zoom. So, But you still be able to hear, and we're all going to sing together, just that in our own homes. All right? All right. Okay. Christmas service that we just pass our christmas service will be the sunday before christmas so it's december 20th same time same station facebook live christmas service will be december 20th please join us hopefully we have some special speaking of specials if you guys want to do a special let me know we'd love to have specials and speaking of specials this Sunday, I didn't have a special, but we got a special video we would like to present to you folks. And hopefully you will enjoy it because we did. All we did was laugh. It was beautiful. A little story about the birth of Jesus told by some youngsters. Well, how do you want to start? You have to turn it. I'm begging to start. I'll turn them around. Now you gotta turn them again. You gotta start it. Which way? <laughs> An angel came to see Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, "Mary, you're gonna have what? I can't, I can't say it good. Mary, you're gonna have a baby." I, you're going to have a baby, and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not going to have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph.
Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel, and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms. Literally, no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple, and then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel was singing. Glorious. <laughs> and then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, some shoes, some Jordans. Gold, Frank, and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. All right. Huh? That's awesome. I uh, hope you folks enjoyed that. Anyway, we're going to get into our message this morning. I want to praise and thank God. Our message comes from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testaments, chapter 7. We're going to read from verses 10 to 14. And um, we're calling this one Christmas Presents. So I'm going to turn it over to a Hawaiiana Olelo speaker over here. My lovely wife is going to read our scripture in Hawaiian and then in English. This one is kind of a lot of mouthful. So Isaiah... Mo, Isaiah Mokuna. Ehiku <laughs> Pauku Umi. Ahiki Ika Pauku Umi Kama Kumaha. 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 Kalamai. By Bala Hemolele from the Hawaiian Bible. Olelo ho mai o Yehova ya asa imaila. E no noi e oi e ho ailono holona no. My Yehovah, my ko akua mai. E no noi ma ka honu, ho honu, a makahi kie kie paha. I kolu u i akula o ahaza. A ole au e no noi, a ole ho i au e aa aku Yehovah. A laila i maila ia, e ho lohe o ko, e ka ohana o Davida. He mea u uku akune akune uku ane ya uko ke ho pau pau aho i ka naka naka e ho pau pau aho pu ane oko i ko u akua no laila na ka haka pono ya no e ha avi mai ya uko i ho ailono ho ai lona ala hoi e ha pai ana no ke kahi vahine pu pa a e hanau mai hoi ya i keki a e kapa aku no o ya ya ikona inoa 
or Emanuela. Isaiah 7, 10 to 14 in the National NIV. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz, Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. It is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. Share our hearts in prayers. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, Lord. Thank you for waking us up this morning and continue to take in the day as long as you're there with us, Lord. We ask that we bring everything before you and leave all the negativity out the door, Lord. We just bring this day to you as we come and we hear your word and your message from our call today. Lord, may we just... Ask for the words to speak to our ears and into our hearts and receive you. And we just want to thank you for just bringing us here today, Lord. Every one of our hearts, Lord. So as we go into our message, Lord, open our ears and also our hearts. We pray all these things in your precious name. And we give you all the thanks, praise, honor, and glory. And we glorify you. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you, honey. So once again, I want to thank God for this beautiful day. Our message today is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 14, 10 to 14. And basically about speaking about a bird of Jesus. No ear may hear his coming. But in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Those words from Philip, Philip Brooks, much love him, a little town of Bethlehem, point to the very heart of Christmas. Jesus came into our broken world to rescue us from our sin and give all who put their mind and their faith in him. A new and vital relationship with God. In the letter to a friend decades after he wrote the hymn, Brooks poignantly described the outcome of this relationship in his own life. He says, I cannot tell you how personal this grows to me. He is here. He knows me and I know him. It is no figure of speech. It is the realest thing in the world and every day makes it more real. And one wonders with delight what it will grow to as the years go on. Brooks' calm assurance of God's presence in his life reflects one of the names of Jesus prophesied by Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, as in verse seven, uh, as in verse 14. The Gospel of Matthew gives us the meaning of the Hebrew name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. That's in Matthew 1, 23. Well, God drew near to us through Jesus, who would, who we could now, who we could know him personally and be with him forever. His loving presence with us is the greatest gift of all. And our message today, we're going to, we're going to, um, get into that and this first section i'm going to call this first section i like to call this shut the front door you see the story is about actually was um a king king of uh of judah his name was ahaz 
one of Judah's worst kings and afraid that Judah was going to be conquered by two kingdoms, Rezin and Pika. Pika? Or Pekka, I think. Or Pika. And given, and so King Ahaz was given this incredible opportunity. God sent Isaiah to King Ahaz to tell him that everything's going to be fine. Ask God for a sign if you don't believe. Yeah? He said to ask God for a sign for proof of protection. Yeah? So that's why God sent Isaiah. And and King Ahaz, he didn't want to. He, he was afraid to ask God for a sign. So he kind of pulled it off like, oh, no, I'm not going to bother I'm not going to bother God with, the, with, with you know, I'm not going to test him. That's what he says. I'm not going to test God by asking him to give me a sign. Yeah, so, and Ahaz, he didn't believe it. So he didn't believe Isaiah, and he felt that he still needed to get his own, make his own plans, yeah? He didn't believe that God was going to save them. Despite that Isaiah kind of like told him that, hey, Ask God. He's gonna. He told me to. He sent me here to tell you that He's gonna take care of you. Yeah. He has totally refused to ask the Lord. Yeah. He turns down this once in a lifetime opportunity. He turns down this opportunity. He pretty much literally shut the front door. So imagine you get this good news from God. Your kingdom won't be conquered. And better than that, God said he give you a sign to back up that word. Who turns that down? Who turns that down? Imagine if God sent somebody to tell you that, oh, God's going to take care of you during this pandemic. You're going to get, you're going to be no worry about it. All you got to do is ask for a sign. If you don't believe, ask for a sign. Who turns down that opportunity to ask God for a sign? Ahaz does. Ahaz did. Because Ahaz thinks he can handle everything on his own. He tries to be humble about it by saying, oh, I would not ask him. I would not put him to the test. But really, Ahaz was just shutting the front door, slamming the door on God. How many of us are like this today? We sab sabotage our own selves yeah before we even step up to the plate we already decided it's not going to happen yeah all the time how many of us do that yeah we shut the door in front of us we put up walls around us because we're what scared of the results or we're scared of being let down we're scared of falling down Oh, ye of little faith. Amen. <laughs> right? We're so scared of that. We fuse. And then we, without sub, you know, subconscious or unsubconscious, we're pretty much refusing God's help. We shut the front door on him. Let me show you a scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29, 11, It says, for I know the plans I have for you. That's God telling you. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. If we can understand this, would we shut the front door on God? Huh? If, if, if Ahaz had read the scripture, I don't think he would have shut the front door. I don't know about you. But I wouldn't shut the front door on something that's... It's going to benefit us. But a lot of times, that's what happens. We shut the front door on Jesus. We shut the front door on an opportunity to put our trust in him. We still think, oh, no, I got to take care of this matter myself. And there's a, what is that prayer? The serenity prayer. What does the serenity prayer says? That God grant me the wisdom to what? Do the 
the things that I can do, do the best that I can do. But then the other part of it is what? The part that we cannot, we turn that over to God and we trust God and allow God to do his work. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we shut the door on him. We shut him down from allowing him to help us. So that first part that we in this scripture is is that Ahaz, that's what happened. He shut the door on God. Now I'm going to get to the other part that God actually gives a sign. Yeah? He gives the sign anyway. He gives the sign de despite Ahaz declines to ask God, the Lord, for it. To ask God that an assurance from God, a promise yeah, of protection. Now let me give you an illustration. So Ahaz is like someone who's driving down the road. Picture yourself driving down the road, not quite sure where you're going, where he's going, yeah? And God offers a sign. It's almost like he's giving you one free GPS, yeah? How many of you use that? I, I, we use that all the time, man, especially, we, especially like now, especially during pandemic, finding all this place popping up for food, and we're trying to track them down, right? So did we finally get the address? So we think, oh, okay, okay. But, you know, not every, not all of us can know where that place is. Some of us, you know, if you're lucky, you had like when, when dad is a re refuge collector, the, the, it's automatic GPS in your system. But if you don't, it's good to have a device. And, and Ahaz, you imagine if he was, God was giving him a free GPS system. Yeah? God's protection system. And he declined it. But... Imagine driving out on GPS and he gives you directions all the way to your destination. That's what God was doing. Was giving him one GPS all the way to his destination so he don't need to get lost. He don't even have to think. It's almost like getting one of those new awesome uh, cars where you just you know, push the buttons in or just say, uh, Siri, take me to this address. And you can just sit back and let that bugger drive you to the place. You know, you know like how those, some of those movies, they get that, huh? But Ahaz refuses. Now, like a typical guy, Ahaz doesn't want to ask for directions. I know people like that. You know, sometimes you go to like the mainland and, and you get one of those maps. You know, before we had GPS. Oh, my God. You get the maps. And we all still were trying to figure them out. And we're still getting lost. And instead of pull up to a gas station or... One of the locals and I said, hey, you know where this place is? No, we we like, no, I got him, I got him. No, 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 I get him, <laughs> I, I get him. And next thing you know what? We still like about two counties down. Lost. Right? Lost. And that's what A has. Yeah? A typical guy, he never like asked for direction because he what? Too much pride. Mm -hmm. And that's what we get. We get too much pride sometimes to ask the Lord. Even if it, we know Somebody's telling us it's a done set deal. All you got to do is ask Jesus. And that's that's life today. That's that's the spiritual gift for us today is that we just got to ask Jesus forgive us for our sins and come into our heart. That seal if you don't know it by now, that seals your ticket your one way ticket to heaven. We got to we got to open the door. We got to allow him to come into our hearts. Because until we do that, we're not going to get our ticket to heaven. We're going to be wandering this world lost. Our GPS is broken because we don't, we, we're not allowing God to take control of our GPS. So we continue to wander. He decides he can figure it on his own. He decides he already knows what's going to happen. So he'll take care of it by himself. How many of us are like Ahaz? That think we can handle this on our own. We don't need help. We don't want to look weak. Yeah. Our macho-ness kicks in. I think ladies have macho-ness too, yeah? Not as bad as the men, though. The men's macho-ness is just crazy. 
So that's why. So God said, since that Ahaz is going to refuse the sign from me, he said, hey, I'm going to give a sign anyway. And this sign is going to be for everyone in the world. God decides to use this situation to give a sign to everyone. Instead of a GPS for one person, yeah, it's like a, a highway. You know, you know, on, on the H one, I get all those electric signs that tells you what's going on. Before it was just to post of COVID numbers. Yeah, before it was just posting that uh, there's an accident on the, you know, by the poly, so oh, take caution, another route. Yeah, slippery. but now you can see all okay, kind. You know, they now every morning they get the the COVID. Count for the day. Wear a mask. Yeah. Or they even put, I see, and even put, like, if they get that big, I remember they had that little stadium, um, um, what you call, food drive. They post it up. Food drive. If you need food, go to the little stadium. You know, and, and that's what God did. God posted a message that everyone could see. It was a message to for everyone. A better sign. Isaiah gives the sign as a virgin will give birth. And that's what happened. No longer has this has to do with Ahaz anymore because he declined it, that he decided to still give this sign and was a sign to give everybody by sending his son to give birth to um, a virgin to give birth to the son of the Lord, which will be the king. The king of the Jews. Yeah. A sign that all drivers could follow. The directions that headed. You know, back in those days, God sent the sign was that bright star. Yeah. That headed toward the Messiah or the birth of Jesus. The sign that was given to the world and his name was Emmanuel, meaning that God is with us. God was letting them know. That he was still with us through our ups and downs. He will never, will never be alone or without his presence. God was sending the Son, Emmanuel, Jesus to, to let us know that he is still with us. He's always going to be with us. He's going to be. He's, you know, he says, "I'm your provider, protector, all of the above," and God sends Jesus. Not only to let us know that he's going to protect us, but to what? He, he sent Jesus to conquer death. He paid the price for all of our sins that we can have a relationship directly with him now. Christians believe that the Messiah was sent by God to save humanity. The terms Messiah and Christ both mean anointed one. Throughout the New Testament, there is evidence of Jesus as the chosen one through his resurrection from the dead and the miracles that he performed. Our last section that we're going to talk about is this gift, this gift that was given to the world, the gift of the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God is with us. The gift that was given all, to everyone, the gift of hope, a promise of everlasting life for all who believe and come to repentance. He died for all our sins of the world. So what does that mean for us today? It means that Jesus paid the price. He paid the price for our salvation. It's free. All we have to do is to repent and believe. Accept him as your personal savior. Let me share with you a scripture in Romans 6, 22 and 23. It says, but now that you have been set free from sin... And have become slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. 
in Jesus, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Church, what does that mean? That if you continue to live the way you do and not accept God into your life, you will, your end, your ending, or your ending is destruction. Yeah? Because if we continue to live in sin, what does it say? Verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Once you die, if you die in sin, you remain in sin for eternity. But there's a gift. There's a present. The present is that our Father sent His Son to pay the price for your sins. To pay the price that you can get a ticket to heaven. All we need to do is accept him as our personal savior. Repent. Come to come to know the Lord. Let him into your heart. Open the door. <laughs> it's amazing. How so much people are so much worries, so much and you know, and that's only normal. That's the human nature, that's why. Yeah. We don't have trust anymore. This world, this country, as we took God out of the picture, we also taking a lot of stuff out. Trust. We don't trust anybody anymore. We are on lockdown 24-7. If you think that the pandemic is locking you down, I think we already was on lockdown. We already were on lockdown. We locked ourselves off from others. The pandemic just made it more known. We shut the front door so much times before the pandemic. I think the pandemic had allowed us to open our door more because we need help. We, it allowed us to, to, it kind of forced us to reach out to others. How do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? First of all, we need to pray. Through prayer, we can invite Jesus to come into our hearts and to become our personal Savior. Church, if you're struggling with things and all that, you don't know who to turn to, you don't, you know, you run out of options, you run out of uh, people to call on. Well, there's always someone there to call on. His name is Jesus. Jesus is is the one person he will never fail you. Sometimes we we like to argue or or dispute that point, but he never fails us. Because when we think that he failed us, it's because we failed him. We lost sight of him. We forgot about him. We put him on the side. Some of us put him on a shelf. I got Jesus. Yeah. The Bible is still right there. You see them at home. And you got to go over there. <laughs> kind of dust them off to see the words. Yeah? Because what happened? We shut the door by leaving the book there. We put there in a, on the cupboard, on the shelf, and we shut the door. Jesus got to be in here 24-7. We got to open that door, take that book out, dust it off, and allow him to come back into our lives. It's free. You just got to make the choice to want it. You need to make the choice for freedom, true freedom. Some of us think we're free. Oh, I don't need I'm free to do whatever I like. Yeah. I don't need to wear a mask. Free to do whatever I like. But the best freedom we have is that we have the freedom to worship the Lord. We have the freedom to do that. The freedom choice to, to say, God, come into my life. Take control. I'm struggling. I need your help, Lord. And just let him do his magic. Let him do his. It's not even magic. That's just God's way of doing things. Allow him to work in your life. 
Let me share another scripture. It's in Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10, and then also verse 13. I'm going to skip to verse 13. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. This is how you give yourself to God. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is not by doing good stuff. I mean, not saying that good doing good stuff is not good. It's good. But it goes beyond that. It's that you have to have a heart of worship. It says, for with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That's how we save. And all we got to do is come to the Lord in and, 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 and like a prayer. And a prayer is, it can be just like talking to Jesus or like talking to your neighbor or talking to someone. But it has to be in sincere prayer and say, Lord, I open my heart to you, Lord. I open the doors. Have your way. Forgive me for all of my sins. And come into my heart. Take control. I believe you, Lord. And I trust. And I give my life to you. It's as simple as that. And in verse 13, he says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. What does this scripture mean for us today? The message is that God has given us all a sign of hope. That sign was the birth of his son to a virgin Mary. A son given to the world, given the name Jesus who was also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is the assurance that God will save us all, all who come to him. His promise, is, his promise to us is forgiveness, love, peace, salvation, eternal life. The birth of Jesus was a sign from our Savior. It was not a small one, but a big one, where angels showed up in multitudes, calling out to the shepherds, making sure people knew the king was born. The king of the Jews is born, and his promise was fulfilled. It is our assurance that there is a free ticket to heaven and eternal life. With a great mansion in the sky, which he is preparing for his children. Church, the Christmas gift this year that should look forward to, that we should look forward to every year, is the remembrance of that sign given to the world, wrapped in swaddling clothes, which is the birth of Jesus. Emmanuel, God is with us. Well, you know, as always, I like to end my message with a little story. And this story is, in, is entitled, Lord of the Messy Manger. Lord of the Messy Manger. If you think your life is utter disaster, that God could never use a life as messed up as yours, think again. Let me point you to some familiar Bible stories. Joseph's brothers hate him. They hated him so much that they sold him as a slave and made uh, their father, and they made their father believe he, he has been devoured by animals. But God meant it for good. To save thousands from starvation. Samson's lust after a, a Philistine girl, yeah, Delilah, I guess. Not the nice Jewish girl, 
his parents wanted for him. But the Bible says his father and mother did not know that this was the Lord's doing. King Solomon's son makes a disastrous decision that loses him half the kingdom. What a mess. But God says, this thing is from me. Jacob is a liar and a cheat and has has to flee for his life. He sleeps out in the open with only a rock for a pillow. But when he wakes with a vision of angels, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Your life may appear well ordered on the surface, but underneath there may be disarray, brokenness, pain, shame. Things you seem utterly incapable of fixing. Well, the good news is, my friend, that it is, is that God is bigger than your messy life. God is not impotent. He is not confined by your boundaries. He is God. And he is unafraid of working in messy situations. In fact, he gets a kick out of surprising us with his amazing grace. What are your points of pain? What is the mess that you are struggling with? Maybe just maybe God is able to take your mess and out of it bring a blessing. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have called a who have been called according to his purpose. How bad can it get? A girl gets pregnant. Her parents is utterly shamed. Her fiance, her fiance, not the father, is ready to dump her. And then he is told, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. How bad can it get? The girl is in labor, far from home. With only a cave barn where she can lie down and have her baby. The only place to put her newborn in is in a manger. A cattle throw. We imagine it with fresh fragrant straw plucked from a bale of behay. But I doubt that the cave was stocked with neat bales stacked against the wall. The straw that night was neither fresh nor fragrant. Life was a mess, but God was in it. God sees Mary with her tiny infant and sends a host of angels to announce the birth. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for all. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. Laying in the manger. The messy manger is itself a sign from God. Is your life a mess? Then let this be a sign to you. Your very good news is that God. Of the messy manger, the resurrected Christ, of the cruel cross, and the Holy Spirit, in whom you live and move and have your being, are able to break through in your life. Begin to clean up your mess. Bless you too. And that, like the messy manger, will be a wonderful, a wonder. All in its own. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for this message that you had for us today. As we go through this season so quickly, Lord, let us remember that the sign you gave us. 
when you sent your son to die for our sins. To give us a choice to be free. Free from the sins of this world. Knowing that the ultimate goal is that ticket to heaven. Where we can live eternally with you. Lord, whatever mess we're going through today, Lord, that we know that if we put our trust and faith in you, we're covered. We might not live a life of royalty, but it's okay. Because we know our riches are in heaven, not here on this temporary world, in this sinful world. But Lord, that we may be the bright, shiny light that draws others to know you, that they too may have this opportunity of eternal and everlasting life, Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts up to you this morning. We open the door wide open. We break down the walls. Let us be an open book for you to have your way. Let the rest of our, our pages in our life be filled with joy. Be filled with love and be filled with you in it. Until that last page, we continue to strive more and more each day to know you more. Bless those that are in a messy world right now that they can that they too can call upon you to help them to clean the mess up. And I know we all have messed through it that but we 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 trust that you are working it out one at a time, taking out the rubbish and putting in flowers. Like flowers that grow in winter's cold, like pure precious gold. Jesus, just the mention of your name fills up a lot, fills up our life with joy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's continue our service. Bird. 
Well, thank you guys for joining us uh, for our service today. Um, getting close. What is the date today? Seven. Next week already is our Christmas service. Wow, right? Seven, it's Christmas yep. that fast. Next week is Christmas. Seven Christmas. days from now. It's the 20th. All right, so this coming Sunday will be our Christmas service next week. Please join us. And if you can, uh, on the 17th, right? I think it was the 17th. Join us for our Christmas dinner. Uh, we hope you folks have a blessed day and enjoyed the message for today. And um, If you guys have any prayer requests, please let us know. You can write them down on, on top of the comments or you can uh, IM me or text me. Uh, we'd love to pray for you. If you know of those that need some prayers too, um, let us know. I want to send a shout out to uh, Brother Ernest out there. I'll continue your prayers, but today is his birthday, and he graduated from the 60s. All right. Happy birthday, Ernest. Um, let's go to the Lord. We're going to end our service with our prayer, and, uh, and then uh, we have one more Christmas song for you folks. Let us pray. Pulikako. Imao mai ke aloha o, e hova ki akua, kamakua aloha oi, o ko mako hako aloha o Yesu Christo, a me kalauna aloha olo olo ana mai, o ko uhane himalele, me kako pakahi apau. May the blessings of Jehovah God, the Father of Lord of love, Jesus Christ, and the love of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Oh, yeah. Shucks. Hey, Kalamai. Day in the Lord, everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye. See you next week. Bye. All right. Yes. <laughs>